This session is going to be on accelerating technology transformation with organizational insights. Today, we have Chris Taylor from Grant Thornton. He is the director of uh, strategic solutions, and his role is responsible for product strategy and adoption. We also have Pendo's very own Tatiana Mamet, who is the SVP of new products. And without further ado, we will introduce them to the stage. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the day. I know I am. It's what a glorious, amazing day um, and couldn't be better for um, this conference. So thank you all for joining us. Um, so today we're going to talk about accelerating, te accelerating technology transformation. Um, and you know, this morning we talked about the fact that the pace of change is accelerating, especially uh, in our organization, so incredibly quickly. So uh, one of the things that we've noticed, and this is uh, a statistic from McKinsey in looking at digital transformation uh, initiatives across organizations, both public sector and private sector, um, is that 84% of executives say that their digital transformation efforts are failing. That is an incredibly sad figure. Just think about that. People have invested so much time, so much effort, so much energy into understanding what are the needs um, around digital transformation, what are the opportunities to really accelerate their business, um, both on the demand side, right, in terms of creating digital transformations that customers are going to be seeing, customer-facing digital transformation, as well as employee-facing digital transformations. They've usually hired places like McKinsey, right, to, and Grant Thornton to really help them understand what their strategy should be for digital transformation. They've sunk millions, sometimes tens of millions, sometimes even hundreds of millions of dollars into these efforts, and 84% say they're failing. Right? That is an incredibly sad statistic. And what we know is that one of the big areas of friction that is contributing to this sad statistic is that people are just overwhelmed. There, a lot of times, what is the, the promise of digital transformation is to create simplicity, take the friction out of, uh, you know, out of the workflow take away the need to actually reach out to another human being and have all those back and forth conversations, all those misunderstandings that can happen, right, when two people interact, right? But in fact, without a, an overarching sort of platform to unify all of these different experiences, what we often find is that more applications with different UX, right? Each one of these applications has their own user experience, has their own logic, has its own way of doing things. They use different words in the menus, right? One will you say, you know, save, the other one will say got it, another one will say next, right, or continue, right? All of these frictions, all of these things that contribute to increasing complexity, not simplicity, and it creates more friction instead of taking friction away. So, how might we shift the story of digital transformation from a story of more technology, which it's kind of been, right? It's usually like the strategy is buy, you know, you have a problem, buy this new piece of technology. You have a problem, buy this new piece of technology, which of course is necessary, right? But how do we actually shift the thinking and shift the story from more, more, more? Many organizations today have enough technology. They might not have the right technology, but a lot of them have enough, right? but they don't know how to get the most from it, right? How do we actually have a platform, have an experience that unifies all of these different applications and all of these different technologies that creates simplicity, takes the friction out, creates a unified experience? And if it's employee-facing app, how do we bring the culture of our organization out through this new digital workplace, right? So all of these things are so possible now with a digital adoption platform. Okay, next, next slide. And we believe that a great digital adoption platform really happens by taking an employee-centric approach. It happens not from 
you know, just top-down strategy, but also allowing for bottom-up understanding and bottoms-up feedback to come through. And so where uh, our adopt product and where our approach to digital adoption is really unique is that we start with an employee-centric view. We start with the analytics. You're all here at a Pendo conference, so you all believe that data is important. You all believe that um, understanding what people are actually doing is better than wish wishful thinking about what they should be doing. Um, so we believe the same thing. We believe that when you actually look at the real behaviors of your employees, you're gonna discover things that you may not have seen before. One, you're gonna discover reality. <laughs> um, two, you're gonna discover maybe they're doing things that are even better than what you know, the consultants you know, thought of, right? Maybe you have some incredible employees that have figured out how to put workflows together that are even better, right, than any of the executives or any of the consultants could have thought of, right? So those analytics and understanding how employees are currently behaving and feeling is where we start. Then we have improving the experience, right? So once you understand, you know, how people are working, where they're facing friction, you want to have the power to improve their experience right in the same platform. And the power of that is, you know, if those of you who are familiar with segments, right, you can actually look at a segment and how it's using something and go directly from that analytics to building a guide for that segment, right? So right in the same platform. So really being able to improve the experience and personalize how people are experiencing these applications. And then the third is to optimize by capturing and prioritizing the employee needs through feedback. And here, of course, you have the product data, which gives you the quantitative feedback, and you also have you know, the qualitative data, right? You have in-app polls, you have ways of gathering their input and, and prioritizing it, right? So having all three of these things in one platform gives you the power, right, to actually drive digital transformation through better employee experience. And so, you know, what we believe that when behavior leads, strategy and great strategy can follow. And here you can say, like, without the organizational insight, without starting with real data about how real employees are working, you're often working on gut feel, right? You're often working with, um, you know, what the highest paid person's opinion is in the room, right? You're often working, you know, from a reactive perspective, right? You're reacting to something that someone says isn't working as opposed to proactively looking for opportunities and looking for, um, you know, uh, areas, right, to really optimize the behaviors. You're also often unable to ladder up from tactics to strategy, right, because you just don't have all of the pieces together, right? Because you might have an anecdote here, an anecdote there, an anecdote there, and you're kind of like playing whack-a-mole, right? Because you don't have the overarching framework around the analytics to be able to drill in and drill out to say, okay, this team is, has given me an anecdote that they are not using this application for this, you know, for this reason and they want that. Okay, let's look at other teams. Are they having the same experience? What kinds of commonalities do they have? You can actually then start to dive in, zoom in and zoom out on the product analytics. And then the other pieces, you might have, you know, more, you are constantly just, again, getting into the, the framework of problem, and, you know, put in another guide. Problem, create some more content. Problem, create another video. Problem, so you're just asking for more resources, right? As opposed to constantly be being to, able to zoom out and say, oh, I just heard that there's another issue. Is this something that requires something more, or does it require taking something away that we've built, right? So it actually allows you to have more of a strategic approach that actually, over time, requires far fewer resources than if you're playing whack-a-mole, right? Does that make sense? So with organizational insights, you have data-driven analysis and strategy. You have, you're targeted, um, you're targeting your tactics to your actual business objectives. You can proactively look at and ladder up to what are the strategic objectives and actually, you know, create the resources, the content, the experiences, right, that are proactively creating this great digital workplace. And you can replicate and scale desired behaviors based on what actually works, right? You get to kind of look at 
what's working in the organization, and then you know, train everybody else to do that as well. So the Everest Group just put out a great report on digital adoption, and especially the role of analytics in digital adoption. And this is why you know, Pendo really decided to enter this space, is because we believe that we can help organizations better than any other platform, right, really drive digital transformation and digital adoption through being data-driven. And the Everest Group said, digital adoption analytics equip enterprises with data-driven insights to identify adoption opportunities or support gaps and provide a comprehensive view of enterprise digital initiatives, thereby forming the backbone of key business decisions, right? So digital adoption becomes, can become a point in time transactional thing, right? You buy a piece of software, you need people to adopt it. But when you actually start to look at what digital adoption platforms can become, they can become the backbone for key business strategic, uh, business strategy decision making because they are your view, they are your bird's eye view on what's actually happening in your company. And by the time a lot of data gets into your looker, your Tableau dashboard about what happened in your company, it's too late, right? It's the end of the month, it's the end of the quarter. And product data, getting these insights real time, right, um, can actually uh, be the leading indicator of what's going on in your company and what you're gonna see at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter in your other dashboards, right? So the ability to have that insight in your employee workspace, in your digital, into your digital workplace, um, can really power so many incredible business decisions. And that's what we believe. And uh, so here, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to welcome Chris Taylor from Grant Thornton. Um, Chris is a director of product strategy um, at Grant Thornton. Here, you can sit right there. Um, and, uh, and enterprise technology. Previously, uh, Chris was also VP of product operations at Better Cloud, and he's had lots of different roles at other tech companies. Um, so we're really happy to have this conversation about digital transformation in complex enterprises and, and, and highly regulated environments as well. So please welcome Chris. Thank you, Tatiana. Let it, just since we're operating with a headset, thumbs up, everyone can hear me? Okay, great. All right. Gosh, I should have asked that too. Nobody could, maybe nobody could hear me at all. <laughs> well, I could. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, Chris, you know, uh, I know that you do a lot of work in highly regulated industries, um, specifically focusing on public sector and the government and helping different government agencies really work better, be more efficient uh, with technology. And um, uh, that sounds really hard to me. I mean, I, I've, all of us have dealt with the government. That doesn't, you know, that's a, that's a tall order. I think all of us really want you to succeed. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit um, about some of the obstacles, challenges, and maybe some of the wins that you're finding in uh, digital transformation, especially in public sector and highly regulated environments. Yeah, sure. So first of all, let me just say um, to Pindo and to Tatiana, thank you for the opportunity and privilege of being here and to represent Grant Thornton. And so one of the obstacles that you may expect is the, the regulation, right? Instead of, you know, I come from mainly a commercial background, and if we wanted to invest in something or make a decision, we could simply do that, right? There are rules in the public sector that govern what you can and can't do. And so that's one of the obstacles that, that we have to work around. And, but there are ways around it, and there are people interested in taking steps forward and doing innovative things. It's at, it's at a scale that is different than what I'd experienced you know, at companies like Dell in the commercial sector. Um, but to your point, we all want that to succeed, right? So we all have a vested interest in this. And so, but I'll, I'll give you an example of maybe just one of the wins. There are a number that we could go through, uh, but some of the government agencies are interested in, in setting up what, what we're calling a digital or an innovation lab. And so um, I currently run one of those at one of the agencies, and we're talking to other government agencies about standing this up almost as an incubator, what we might think of as um, you know, wine combinator and accelerator that you might see out on the West Coast. Um, this is sort of their, their version of that. And so there are opportunities that if value can be shown uh, to maybe take this and we think expand it to other opportunities within the government. So there are some uh, lights we see, some, some bright spots. 
I mean, digital transformation for the government would be so great. I mean, even thinking about dealing with the IRS and all the times that you actually need to call, which is mortifying, right? Um, so how is the government thinking about technology and technology adoption to help speed up some of the, you know, and take away some of the frictions, right, for both their employees and ultimately citizens? Yeah, so, so one, one of the things, it's funny you should mention the IRS. Um, <laughs> They have an interest in some of these areas as well. And, um, and so what, what they're looking at are things like AI, machine learning, augmented reality, ways that you can take and get information about the needs that, that we all may have as a citizen without having to pick up that phone and call. Because every time we call, it costs taxpayer dollars. And normally, um, you know, that might require more than one phone call. And so the government is interested in using data and technology to improve what, what we would call the citizen experience, maybe not the customer experience, but the citizen experience and using some of the latest technologies, like I mentioned, augmented reality actually is something that is being looked at and considered for some of these projects. So, so those are some of the ways that they're considering that right now. That's great. Uh, I hope that happens. <laughs> Um, and what about, so what about the role of data, right? How do you use data and insights about what people are actually doing and what employees are actually doing to help create, you know, uh, confidence or, or maybe give a push to some of the, the better efforts around digital transformation? Yeah, so we, um, I actually just wrapped up an engagement where they were interested in that very thing. The government had something, and if I mentioned it, everyone here would be familiar with it. But what they didn't know is who are my customers? What do they look like? What, do, what are they trying to do with this particular offering that is offered by the government? They just had no visibility to who the customers were, their profiles, personas, any of that. It was all missing. And so through the project that, um, that we were recently um, assisting this particular agency with, that was what came to light was, hey, this is what your customers look like. Here's what their journey looks like. And at least at a high level, we began to paint that picture. But what, but I'll say, is what was missing though, and where I think there's still a lot of opportunity is really the granular data to show without having to ask without having to use customer interviews, which can be very insightful, but can be something that's not scalable, right? So the opportunity to take data to tell who are the customers, what are they trying to do? What problem are they trying to solve? And then where is that value getting blocked? Where are they falling off um, sort of what we would expect to be the customer journey or that flow of, of task? Where are they getting stuck or lost? And where does the engagement drop off? Those are some areas where, um, you know, I, we'd love to see more data available for things like that to help improve the experience. And, and does that give them confidence to do things better? Or, I mean, I assume it, the decision making is often very long in the government. Does this speed up some of the decision making and some of those blockages that you might have? It, it, it certainly can. And it can, it can identify areas that receive additional funding, right? So the, the funding should be aligned to problems that are being solved. And a lot of times, if that's unclear, then it could hold it up for a very long time because there are other ways to try to get to those decisions, right? So when you have data and you can identify a pinpoint, look, this is a friction point for a customer or this is a, a, an area of pain and you can get to that decision quickly or an understanding quickly, then you can move to a decision more quickly. And not only a decision, but a decision with confidence that you can then measure what's the impact once we take an action. So all those things I would say are very relevant. I think some of us that have worked with very large private sector companies can identify with that as well, right? Do you see that as well in your private sector uh, practice? We, we do. So we work with some large companies um, like Merck, as an example, uh, Microsoft, and some companies like that. And, and actually, years ago, it's been a while, but I worked for uh, the Southern Company, which is uh, one of the largest energy companies in the world, headquartered in Atlanta. And it's, it's not a public sector entity, but it is highly regulated, both from, um, you know, they have nuclear reactors. Anytime you have that, everybody wants to regulate what you do. Uh, and so the, the ability to innovate and drive change, what could be very slow, because the incentive is for minimal risk, not necessarily new innovation. 
But if you can use data to identify where the risk is, what we found is that can increase confidence and sort of accelerate decisions going forward when you are looking at how can I reduce the risk that I see. So that's what we see more so in the in the public uh, in the private sector. So listen up, everybody who's got an executive who's a risk averse, right? Data. That's right. That's data right. can help get them past their risk aversion. That's right. Data can help them get past their own opinion. Right. Yeah, because then you're having a conversation. Then you're having a conversation about, hey, what are the real facts here? And it's not the opinion, or it's not sometimes what people might see as their educated opinion about we should do this. And because sometimes our assumptions, believe it or not, could actually be wrong. And so when you take data and bring that to bear, it can help give such clarity to the decision and make it so much easier. That's great. And it's, it's good to hear that that's actually even working in the government. <laughs> um, so speaking of some work in the government and, and risk aversion, um, um, I spent seven and a half years at IDEO. And uh, some of my engagements were with the government around trying to drive innovation. It's interesting that you're saying that they're setting up these little incubators now, because that, that's probably a much better model, to be quite honest, than I think what we were trying to do, which was uh, work with the um, with the political appointees primarily to, to get some innovation through before they were kicked out of their jobs, <laughs> which was really their, you know, motivation to get something done before they were kicked out. But, um, you know, uh, so I know that it was really hard, you know, even five years ago or 10 years ago when I was doing this with the government because the technology just wasn't there yet. Um, and it felt like we had to build everything from scratch. It always felt like we were starting from zero. So can you tell me a little bit about how new platforms or new technologies um, might have, you know, be emerging to, right, to really help drive and spur innovation um, among your clients? Sure. So, and again, so cloud, as everyone has heard, cloud is, all, is, a, is a big topic, right? And in the private sector, what we might call industry in the commercial side, that's much further along, right? In the cloud space, and I'm painting with broad, broad brushes here, uh, but the government is behind where you might expect most companies to be. And, but that represents a, a sort of a new paradigm, right? Something that wasn't available before suddenly now creates new opportunities and sort of new ways to innovate. Um, in fact, you know, even testing, you could test and put things out in the cloud without having to build all the infrastructure behind something before you want to make a decision to invest in something more permanently. So not only do you have cloud, which represents this totally new paradigm, um, at least for the public sector, right? Uh, you, you then have tools that are, that are now cloud native. So like Better Cloud, for example, where I came to, I, when I joined Grant Thornton, I came from Better Cloud, and we were cloud only. There was no such thing as an on-prem version. Everything was cloud native. Um, we didn't have any data centers, right? Everything was cloud. Uh, so when you look at some of those technologies, the ability to measure the impact of what you do and then build things much more quickly and you can spin things up, spin things down, all those dynamics make a tremendous difference in how you move forward. That, that's really great. Again, we're talking a lot about you know, the bright side, the bright signals, right? And the bright sides and like all of this optimism. Um, but I keep coming back to that statistic th that most digital transformation efforts fail. And so there are these new technologies, right? There are new business model or new models, right? For organizing around labs and, and centers of excellence around digital transformation. And there's all, all these new things that are supposed to make it more successful or more likely to be successful. But do you agree that most digital transformation efforts fail? Like, you don't have to talk about your own practice, but I mean, just in the world, just in the world. Sure. Uh, what are you seeing? Do you agree with that statistic? And, and what do you think we can do about it? Yeah, it's a great question. So of course, none of the projects that our firm has fail ever. <laughs> uh, but for other people who are involved in this space, of course, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, I, de I would personally agree with that statement. And I tell you, the reason that I think that failure rate is so high is because there's not a clear understanding of who the customer is at the very beginning. And because technology being a tool, you can throw technology at anything. That doesn't solve the problem. It can just simply amplify it at times. And so what we found and what we actually help a lot of our clients do, what we try to focus them in on is what, who is your main customer? What is their, what is their pain and what are, they, what are they experiencing? Because what we see a lot of times, and this 
maybe more prevalent in the government, I'm not sure, but a, a very large IT implementation of, let's say, ServiceNow or some, some large Salesforce, some large implementation, and we think, oh, that's going to solve it. The technology's there, but the problems are, are still there. And that's because for what we see is there's not enough work on the front end to make sure that what's built and customized and implemented is really tailored at solving the problems that customers have and then being able to measure that on the back end. Okay, so we, we spent $300 million and we installed X solution, but how do we know that that was successful? And how do we know that the impact we sought is the impact that we got? We could have had a totally different impact, but how do we know we're solving the problem for customers that we set out to solve with the customer in the center and the citizen in the, in the center of that experience? That's really what, what I see is that, it fails, but the opportunity is more, I think, to put employees and customers at the center. That's, those are great words to end with um, because uh, putting your customer at the center, really understanding your customer, having the tools and technologies to really take a data-driven approach um, and understanding who are you solving the problem for, what is their problem, not what is your problem, and then moving from there. And I think that that's where both qualitative and quantitative data can really work to drive a much higher success rate in digital transformation efforts. So thank you all for, I think we have our next speakers maybe here as well. Um, thank you all for joining us. And, oh, next slide, sorry, next slide. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, and thank you all for joining us. Oh, here we go. Um, please uh, scan the QR code. So Hannah is prompting me there. Um, and, uh, you know, and if you, uh, it, we also have our research team right there. Um, come and talk to them about our, this, all of these new opportunities. We're, you know, building this product or designing this platform as we speak. We want your input, we want your help. We want to understand who you are. We want to understand our customer. We want to understand your problems. We want to solve your problems, not our problems. Chris is here to help you too. Um, so come and join us, talk to us, and thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>